So Inc, I know this is only our third radio, but I need you to know that things just aren't going to work out for us going forward. Oh, it's not? No, look, man, management and I have been in talks. Management? And truth of the matter is, your parts are just too post-production heavy, man. It's bogging down the rate at which we want to be producing content. So we had to replace you, I'm afraid. Replace me with who, might I ask? Um, I could bring him out, but it's... I don't know, man. It's best you probably just clear right. I insist you bring out my replacement. You sure? Positive. Right. Bring in Chap Addy. Oh boy, guys. It's so good to be here. My name's Chap Addy and I love books. My favourite's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Isn't he great? What's yours, Ink? You gonna do it with me this time? Ready? Advantage, advantage, advantage Miss Satan, Satan by Hampton, by Hampton Charles. Hampton Charles. Oh, we fucked that up. First published in 1990, Advantage Miss Satan is the seventh instalment in a series of cosy mystery novels starring the retired British art teacher Miss Satan. We did ourselves a huge favour by starting at number seven. We're at the mercy of random selection, Inc. What can I say, man? When the up-and-coming female tennis star Patricia Thumper is hounded by letters of death threats, Scotland Yard once again count upon the meddling, brolly-wielding Emily D. Seaton to spoil the villain's plans and serve justice. So we have mixed feelings about this one, don't we, Inc? Sure do. You begin. Check the tags for spoilers because we will get into those eventually. Well, easily my favourite thing about the book is this Miss Seaton character. Nosy, outspoken, always in the wrong place at the wrong time, and a relatable moral compass that has you cheering her on from the first page. I enjoyed her quips, minus a small caveat that Ink will get into, and was especially fond of these slapstick moments involving her weapon of choice, the handy dandy brolly. Some people have compared her to Agatha Christie's Miss Marple character, who I'm not too familiar with, but if you are, there's an idea of what to expect. Hampton's writing style complements the cosy, fluffy tone of the book beautifully. He does bury the reader with pages upon pages of Cockney dialogue and long winding sentences of exposition, but over time I found that this suited the cosy mystery genre and bettered the overall reading experience. The third person omniscient style of writing can be a little jarring, especially in the first few chapters, but serves to benefit the book overall. Looking back, I was actually surprised by how few plot points there were in this book, considering it's 275 odd pages. There were really only a handful of scenes that I actually considered essential to telling the story, but I was also fond of the abundance of reactionary scenes. It allowed for some real development between recurring characters from other books in the series. I was also surprised by this part where two women tennis players are drinking coke during their break, because I thought, no way. But then I had a look on Google, and literally the first link is my favourite tennis player doing the exact same thing. Caffeine! Finally, what I really appreciated about this book is we have a well-realised villain with a real strong motive. And it's around here I pass the baton over to you to talk about some of the criticisms, Inc. Thanking you, and from here on out there will be spoilers. Ye be warned. As Geordie said, we're given a villain with a real strong motive. So strong, in fact, that I had prepared myself for an alternative culprit reveal towards the end of the book, because it seemed just too cut and dry otherwise. Then, in Chapter 15, it's revealed in introspection that Will Parsons, our main and only suspect, is the one who sent the letters to Patricia. Did I miss something? Where's the mystery? I was completely sold on the idea that there'd be some kind of surprise villain reveal towards the end. That's what kept me excited to keep reading. I took note of all the details with the minor characters, hoping there were enough clues to figure out the real culprit before the end. I mean, isn't this how mystery works? How can the reveal just be dumped on us like that? Hey, easy, man. It's frustrating. We're introduced to a lot of characters in that first chapter. And if you aren't already familiar with Miss Seaton and the Scotland Yard gang, as we weren't, it's a tough learning curve to get all the names in your head straight. And don't even get me started on the McDonald's hamburger oh bar line. Oh god, yeah. They're the blokes who get clobbered by the opposition whenever they sell off some rundown old church to be turned into a McDonald's hamburger bar. Hampton, who have you ever heard utter the words McDonald's hamburger bar? Just imagine being in the car with a bunch of your mates. You're all hungry. And someone goes, we'll stop by the McDonald's hamburger bar. I believe you get your ass kicked saying something like that, man. The last thing we need to mention here is that there are lines of dialogue, 
while may have passed by unnoticed in the 90s, some may understandably find a little insensitive today. An example of which is Miss Seaton's use of the word. I mean, I understand there's a method to Miss Seaton's madness, but it just seemed very out of character for the woman we got to know throughout the rest of the story. Then again, we haven't read the other books, so who's to say? And that just about wraps things up. If you're looking for a cozy mystery read with a Miss Marple-like heroine, then this might be for you. But I'd probably suggest looking for a higher rated or a more trusted entry in the series, because there's kinks in this one that might give you a bad impression of the Miss Seaton series overall. Here, yeah, yeah. here. Next random book, Geordie. After the Stars Fall by Bethany Campbell. And don't forget about me, the one and only little old chap- <gasps> Chap Addy! Oh, chap Addy. A quick announcement before we go. Uh, the next video will be a new segment called Storytime. I have some pretty wild stories from my childhood, which I rarely get to tell in detail. So I'm going to use this platform to tell them in the best possible way. I have stories too. Yeah, I guess you do. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.